Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3 of This Old Knit. My name is Nina, otherwise known as Ine on Ravelry. And it's actually pretty cloudy outside today, but the light is still super bright. So I turned down the exposure on my camera and hopefully it'll be okay. Um, I may or may not take my glasses off um, if this glare on them annoys me. But we'll see how it goes. So anyway, I promised that I would podcast this week from the nook, as I call it, in my house. So it's kind of this tiny bump out area that's over the stairs. Um, and it just has one window, as you can see. And I have, um, this is actually my grandmother's rocking chair. Um, I have that up here and it's kind of a nice place to sit and knit. I have a little table, which is where the laptop is sitting right now. Um, and yeah, there's just enough room for maybe a project basket and what I'm working on. And I put uh, my drink on the windowsill. So um, I haven't been able to be up here for a while. Um, it's pretty cold in the winter time, so I kind of stay away from this area. But uh, you can see I have a shawl on today, even though it's in the 50s outside, just because it's still pretty cold up here. Um, so this week, I made notes, Ooh. but um, some of the things that I'd like to share with you is um, I'd like to share uh, what I'm working on. Uh, I have some things to show you. People had asked me about um, needles and needle case solutions, so I was going to show you what I have. And then also yarn bowls, uh, show you a few more of those that I have this week. So. Um, let's get started with what I'm working on. So last week I had talked about that I was starting the Bonbon bon by Susan Claudino. It's a little rabbit and I had just the feet in it before and I'm actually up to a point where I had to stop because I special ordered uh, little hand painted safety eyes from 6060 on Etsy. And they're super cute. Meglin wanted hot pink eyes and I think they'll be really sweet with the bunny. Um, so I had to stop because it's all knit. Um, you knit the parts, so you knit the legs, you knit the arms, you knit the tail and the ears, and then you actually cast on for the body and you start just kind of joining those pieces as you go along. It's pretty ingenious. Uh, so you don't have a bunch of seaming up to do at the end, which is kind of one of the reasons I don't really knit a lot of toys because I find the finishing so fiddly and <clears throat> difficult to make myself want to do knitting a bunch of teeny tiny seams so prepare to be cutified there he is oh my god so sweet let's see if i can block this crazy sun so you can see the really cute colors but he's this super fun past <laughs> this bunny butt just kills me his tail is so sweet and his, his feet are huge see but you can see his how small his hands are um, and his body is very small as well so I'm actually up to where I would do the head I just have to stuff the body I think I'm gonna put some um, little uh, pellets in there like the pellets you can use for dolls so that he maybe can sit. I don't know if he will because his feet are huge in comparison to his body, but that's the thought that maybe Meglin could sit him on a shelf or something like that if she wanted to and maybe give him a little bit more balance to his body so that the feet aren't just kind of weighing him down. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but once the eyes come in, I don't anticipate this taking very long after that because once I got going on the body it's so small it doesn't take very long at all to do so the head should be super easy and I've already got the ears done. So they are actually right here. So there's the ears. So yeah that's a super fun project it was a really quick knit and I love it it's so cute. So I highly recommend it. It's Bon Bon by Susan Claudino, who is No Knit Sherlock on Ravelry. And she was actually very nice. She helped me out with a question about the eyes because she suggested doing this pattern in worsted weight and I'm doing mine in fingering. So the pattern recommends 12 millimeter eyes and I wasn't sure what size I should use. And she suggested nine millimeters. So that's what I ordered. 
So we will see when those come in how they do. I think they'll be fine. So my next thing is my blanket. And I didn't get a ton more done on this. I actually knit a little bit on it. Um, at work, I had to take my computer to, we have like a, an IT clinic basically. If something kind of happens to your computer and you think it's a quick fix kind of thing, you can take it down there instead of having to put in a ticket and wait for people to get to you. So it's pretty nice. So I actually had some issues with um, the battery not holding a charge and I uh, walk around to a lot of meetings in my work. Um, so I really need my laptop to be able to hold a charge. So while I was sitting down there waiting for them to get to me and put my battery in, I knit on my blanket, which was great. It was great that I had it. So just a bit more on it. I think I've maybe knit one strip around. They're taking longer now, which one would expect as they get larger. But I don't, I don't have a ton left. If you remember, this knitted piece was really huge. It was the size of a sweater front, and now it's just not much at all. So I'm really happy about that. Um, making progress. Yay! And again, this is the 10 stitch blanket by Frankie Brown, and I am knitting it on size 7 clover bamboo needles. I actually hadn't used these in years, so I'm happy that I. I'm finally getting to use them for something. And my next one, my mom actually gave me a suggestion to have everything laid out in front of me. Sorry, mom, I'm in the nook. I can't lay everything out in front of me. So I'm gonna be reaching around cause I had to kind of try to fit everything around me. There's literally maybe this much space beyond the edges of the chair. So my hand here is right up against a gate that we have up because the uh, staircase is surrounded by like a wrought iron railing and um, it has pretty large gaps between the bars. So when Megan was a baby we put up one of those play yards but we put it like most of the way around except for on the opening and then we had the gate part on the opening so that she couldn't like shove her head between the bars or something like that. At this point she's not going to do that because she's old enough but we're just leaving it up because um, Obviously, Joshua is getting bigger, so what's the point of taking it down and then having to put it back up in another couple months? So something I mentioned last time that I didn't have with me is um, my Whispering Pine shawl. So that I have in my Nomi bag, and I got this from one of the um, Advent swaps as well that I mentioned before. This one came from Raylin. And Raylan, I don't remember your Ravelry name. It's Raylan with a number, I think. Um, but she got me really gnome-themed packages. So that year I got uh, the movie Gnomeo and Julia. And if you have kids and you haven't seen it, please do, because it's super cute. Um, it's Romeo and Julia with lawn gnomes. I mean, come on, how adorable is that? Seriously. So I am knitting my Whispering Pines shawl with this beautiful tealy yarn. That's a little bit, that's kind of true to color. It's a really deep, rich um, green with blues and it's just gorgeous. Um, it's the fiber optics um, cashmere. I think she spells it with a K, but uh, I think it's Ripple Batik is the colorway name if you are interested. So I don't have a ton done on mine because I stopped mine to work on my sister's, but you can see the nice little snowflakey detail and um, I think it's going to be really pretty when it's done. I have a lot of stuff that this kind of color would go well with. So uh, I'm excited about it. And I also have on it, because this was before I, it's a very memorizable pattern, but before I had memorized it, I had a little row counter on it. So this one is a fun little rainbow row counter that I got in a rainbow themed swap in the Itty Bitty Knits group from Greg, who is Knitting Daddy on Ravelry. 
And Greg's actually been my partner for a couple of swaps, and he always does great packages. So thank you, Greg. I am using it. Um, the yarn bowls, actually, that I'm going to show you were from um, him as well, and I think they were from that swap. So that's that guy. And then um, I put down the zigzagular socks, but they're really not very interesting and I didn't make a lot of progress on them. I just knit a little bit on them. Um, so you can see my ribbed section is slightly larger. That sun is a mess. And it is super, super gray outside. <laughs> this is hilarious. I mean, it's one of the things that I love about this house is that it has a ton of natural light and that's not very common for houses built in 1900. Um, but mine has a ton of windows and natural light, which is really nice, but apparently it's horrible for podcasting. Who knew? And that is the Zigzagular Socks by Susie White. So there's the pattern. That's what they'll look like. I think they're going to be really pretty in this kind of semi-solid with a little bit of the dots and stuff. And on the back is a very wonderful giraffe sketched by the lovely Megan. And then I actually brought up a few of my cross stitch whips to show. One of them that I hadn't shown before, but I've been working on this for a while. It's also a Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery design. It was a mystery um, pattern for Halloween called Halloween Town. So they released a piece of it um, in different clues. So here's what I've got on that so far. So the first clue was the um, scarecrow and uh, I think over to here, I think to the Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. And then we got the rest of the tree in the house, which sort of annoyed me because I had the tree all nicely, the ends tied off and stuff. And then we got like these teeny bits of ends of branches in the next clue. and. You know, it would have been nice to just finish those out, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so this one has a lot of hand dyed thread in it, and I don't think you can tell, but well, you can kind of tell. You see there's sparkles in the linen, which I love. And then this part was the third clue, and this is actually like a little bakery, so I haven't finished very much of that, but there's a little witch here. I've got her skin, and then I've got the outlines of the cupcakes and a kind of little bakery thing. And then on the bottom, there's a thing that says Halloween Town and it's got kind of some keys and skulls and stuff. I didn't really like it, so I might um, substitute in something like Happy Halloween or Trick or Treat or something like that. Uh, my intention was to make this into um, like a pillow and put some fun fabric around it that was Halloween-y that I could just put on my couch or whatever when it's Halloween time. I don't know that I wanted to per, per se frame it. Um, the other idea I had was putting it on a bag. So like um, I have another cross stitch bag from years ago that was a picture that my sister cross stitched for me. It's a ballerina, like a Precious Moments ballerina. So it was from the 80s when Precious Moments were super popular. And um, I used to do ballet. Uh, I think I did it till I was maybe 12 or 13. Started when I was six or seven. Um, my mom got me lessons as a Christmas gift and um, I continued it basically up through we did, when we did point work and then I stopped. Um, so yeah, I have this bag that has like a cross stitch of um, a ballerina on it and my mom sewed a bag that it's that has the design on it. And I used to use that to take my ballet stuff to the class, but I thought I might do a similar kind of thing. Maybe ask mom um, what pattern she used or if she made it up. Uh, it's just a tote bag, but it's um, kind of corduroy and then it's lined and it's got, sorry, I hear Plonk barking downstairs. 
it's got like lace on the edges of the um, design. So I might do something similar like that with this and uh, make a project bag. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I'm gonna go ahead and take a break for a second and go get him. So. Okay, sorry about that. I actually had a phone call at the same time. So um, obviously I went and got Plonk. Uh, the baby's napping downstairs, so I don't want him to wake him up. And my last whip is my once upon a time sampler. Unfortunately, I didn't get very much done. We went to my mom's to celebrate her birthday last weekend. Um, her birthday is actually tomorrow. Happy birthday, mom. And I forgot my color key. <laughs> so I had all my floss, I had everything ready to go. And then I realized, well, crap, now I don't know what all of the symbols are. So I tried to just work on the things that I knew um, because I've been working on it long enough that I do obviously know what some of the symbols are. So I finished the month name, the year, and I did some more of the border here. So um, this actually goes all the way around, but obviously I got tired of working it. So I've just worked it kind of as I've been going. And I think that's pretty much all I did on this last week. I really had planned on doing a ton. Um, so I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get to do very much, but I had today off. So I um, actually have a whole weekend to work on stuff. Um, and I'll talk about what we did earlier today. A little bit later once I get through all the knitting stuff. That way if people aren't interested in what things I do with my life, um, you can tune out. So um, that's pretty much all my whips. That's what I'm working on. And um, I wanted to talk about, like I said, I wanted to talk about tools. Little Watermelon from Ravelry had asked me about needles and then also Coddington um, who is Autumn, asked me about circular needle knitting, yeah, circular knitting needle cases. It's like Susie sells seashells by the seashore. Um, and she actually, I think, has decided to go with a Namaste circular case, which is one I've thought about, but I have so many needle cases, you will see in a moment, that I just really can't justify it right now. So one that I've had for quite a number of years is this one and it's made by Offhand Designs and what they do, it's a company I believe based in San Francisco, they take um, vintage upholstery and um, recycle it and make it into different stuff. So there's some really beautiful bags, they're crazy expensive, at least to me, I mean I know some people don't balk at spending several hundred dollars on a bag. I just can't get there. I just can't get there. I don't know. I just can't get there. But this needle case was actually in the sale um, room at Article Pract back when that was my local yarn store. And I think they had it for like 60% off. I don't know why. Maybe because it's very 70s and that's not everybody's bag. but. I like these colors a lot. So it is kind of a mustard yellow, avocado green, and then kind of a forest green. And it has texture to it. Yeah, you can see that. Um, so the cream color is kind of the base fabric and it feels almost like duck. And then the raised stuff is kind of that velvety stuff that you would feel on upholstery. And then it has so there's their logo and it has a nice little magnetic snap on the front and inside it's got a zipper pocket and I usually have like a needle gauge in here. I used to keep a cable needle in here before I learned how to cable without a cable needle. I actually feel one still in there. <laughs> I bet I haven't used that in God, five years. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this needle case, which is why if I were to do it again, I would buy a different one, is that it doesn't have a way, it doesn't have labels on the pockets. So, I used masking tape. Woot! It's a very ghetto solution, but it works. So I just have them all labeled. I think I've had as many as like five. Yeah, you can see. This is obviously a size I use a ton of. 
So I've had a bunch of needles in one pocket. They do hold quite a lot. Um, and my size ones and zeros are not in here. Then I also have some double points in here but they've kind of gotten off to other places. I use double points a lot to kind of slip um, stitches on really quickly um, to hold them if I need to um, do something or look at something. So I don't really use them for knitting. I don't like knitting with double points, but back when I first learned to knit, um, Somebody had said like, oh, you, when you get to the top of a hat or whatever, you have to use double points. And that was before I learned to knit with two circs. So that's why I have a bunch of double points is that I would use them for when the circumference got too small for me to continue using one circular. And now I just use two circs for everything. And I really hate the 16 inch circumference circs. Um, they hurt my hands because of the way that I hold my needles. I actually hold it with my entire hand so um, if they aren't the full length of my hand I get cramps in my hands so anyway that's my offhand designs circular knitting needle case and then I have this guy this one is the Delic IQ it's kind of in a satiny fabric a brown satin and it ties closed. I don't think they make this bag anymore. Um, Amanda May 84, Amanda, um, was looking for a an interchangeable needle solution. And I told her to get one of these, but then when I went to look for it, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I don't even know if they make these anymore. I bought it several years ago at, um, um, the knitting shop that used to be just down the street from Yarn Market at Yarn Market and they've since been bought out by um, a company in um, the UK I think and now they're just completely direct mail and they've totally changed everything like it used to be very similar to what I think webs is I'm of course, obviously not as big as webs but it was like a warehouse so they had a showroom and they had one of each ball of yarn that they carried so you could at least see it and see if you would be interested in it and then you would just go to the bins and look at all the colors and everything and they had a ton of like notions they had a whole section that was all needles um, they had um, books and magazines so I got a lot of like back issues of magazines because they had them like gosh going way back so um, Kind of when I first found out they were here and they were literally just down the street from me a couple blocks I would just go there like they would let me call in my order or place it online and then um, just mark that I was gonna go pick it up and I could pick it up on my way home from work and it was really great so anyway um, they this one is labeled so it's got a pocket for each of the tips and then it's got these pockets down below that hold your circular needle um, cords. And then it's got, you can see this little zipper pocket. I should use this to block the sun. <laughs> no, that doesn't work at all. You know, you're crazy. <laughs> I see now why you all talk to yourselves, single, single podcasters probably easier with two people because you have someone to talk to and you don't seem like you're crazy. I don't know. <laughs> I watched several with two people and I do really enjoy the repartee of, um, of a duo, but I don't have anybody else that um, I knit with on a regular basis, so not really an option for me. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer and see if that, no, that's worse. Don't do that, Nina. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Probably making y'all seasick. I think as the sun's coming down, it's probably getting brighter and brighter. So we'll see if. Um, yeah, mm, seems a little bit less washed out. That's why I had my hair kind of down over my face because it didn't make my face look like I was a zombie. 
lighting. It is an issue. Okay. And my next one, I had mentioned this before, is the Addy Clicks. So I bought a set of Addy Clicks for myself this year um, after Christmas time. And um, this year was technically my husband's and my eighth anniversary and the theme of that one is lace. So I said, ooh, they're Addy Lace Clicks. So that counts, right? We don't even do that. We don't actually buy presents for each other ever. So it's just an excuse to buy something. He doesn't care what I do. He stays home. What does he care? Um, so this one's really cool because it opens out. And it's this nice, um, it's leather, I think, on the outside. It might be leather, fake leather. Um, and then it's kind of satiny on the inside. And it has this pocket that your little cords go into. And I, again, have a needle gauge in there just in case. And then your tips are in these little um, rubber bands, kind of, they're elastic, I'm sorry, it's a piece of elastic. And then it's got like little clips on it to hold them down. And they're in order, it's not labeled, but they are labeled actually on the knitting needle. Um, so you don't really need them to be labeled. And then this is an extender thing. Ah! Sorry, I was getting into them earlier, so. Now I've messed it all up. Um, and that's an extender on the bottom to make your um, cords longer if you want to combine two cords. Um, so yeah, I really like these a lot. Um, the cords are just like the, um, the Addy Turbos or the Addy Sock Rockets. If you've used either of those, they're the nice, really flexible cable, which was the main reason I wanted to get these because I love the Addy cables. And these are the lace longs because, again, I like I said, I like a longer needle um, because of the way I knit. Oh, plonky ears, sad, sad boy. Okay, so that is all of my needle cases. There's a lot of them. I actually have one more, but I think Megwin has taken off with it. It's a um, lantern moon case, and it ties as well and I use it for my crochet hooks of which I have many but I don't really crochet I just kind of um, inherited them I think somebody sent them to me as part of a reuse swap maybe um, or she might have included them as a um, a random act of kindness gift because I was saying that I was starting to get into crocheting my Aunt Lynn actually crochets quite a bit, and uh, she makes really beautiful stuff. She made a blanket for Megwin that we use for Joshua now, and it's one of those that has the design, and you can't see it unless you hold it far away. It's a teddy bear, um, and it's kind of green on the border and yellow in the middle. Um, and one of the things that I really want to do next time that we get to see each other is I'd really like her to help me get better at crocheting because I'm not very good at it and um, I would like to be. So moving on, yarn bowls. So the two I'm going to show you today are both from the Pinky Bird and I actually brought that up. So they come in like a burlap sack like this and it's got a little emblem of a flamingo on it. And here's their card, the pinky bird. Mm, I'm sorry, it's really glary. But they're all these smaller bowls, kind of mini bowls, if you will. So the first one I got is this one. Um, and it came to me, like I mentioned, in that rainbow swap from um, Greg, who is Knitting Daddy on Ravelry. And it's got these really cute, like, raised, a butterfly and a heart. And then it's got a little hoobity doo for your yarn, a swoop. Um, it has a hole as well. I don't like using the holes on yarn bowls because then you're kind of stuck, like you are committed to your project being in this bowl until it's done. Um, 
and usually I want to pick them up and move them out. So this one I kind of leave sitting on my desk and it has um, notions in it or smaller things that I want to keep track of. So there's actually a puni in there right now um, from the punis that I was spinning. And then I've got some like wooden sheepy buttons. These really cool ones that I got from Mel, who is Woman in a Shoe. Um, she's in Melbourne, Australia. I got them in last year's um, Advent Swap. And she also sent me these really beautiful silver buttons. They're shank buttons. Those, the other ones were flat buttons. So that's the kind of stuff I keep in here. Just stuff that I want to keep together and keep track of and hide from the children. And this one, when it came, it was actually broken. So this piece was broken off. And um, I told Greg, it's fine. I will fix it. Um, I contacted the pinky bird and I asked how she suggested that I fix it. She said, use two part epoxy and then sit it in sand so that it is stable and has time to dry. Um, so I did that and it, you can't even tell. There's, there's like a seam, but you wouldn't even be able to see it on this camera because of the shine. So there's a tiny bit of a seam, no big deal. It's a great bowl and it worked wonderfully. So if you ever have pottery that breaks, that is not food safe, obviously, because um, it isn't food safe. Uh, buy two-part epoxy. Don't try to use super glue. They said actually the seal on the super glue, it's um, subject to more shearing force uh, and it doesn't fill in the cracks. So two-part epoxy actually fills in the cracks. So uh, super glue puts it together, but doesn't fill in the area. Um, two-part epoxy does. I'm actually touching it right now. So it's right there, which you couldn't see that. Um, so anyway, tip of the day. Uh, but Greg felt terrible for the bowl coming broken, even though that was not his fault in any way, shape, or form. He had it very, very well packaged. It just, you know, things happen. He bought me another one, <laughs> which was so sweet. And it's another green one, but this one's a darker green. So this one has little flowers kind of indented on it. And it's a little bit bigger, I think. It has three holes on it and another little swoop for your yarn. And this one I actually keep all of my cross stitch threads in when I'm working on a project because I like to have them be together. Um, and so these are all my ones for Halloween Town, which was the one I showed you a little bit ago. And then there's actually a stitch marker on there as well. But this is kind of nice because then I just have it sitting on my desk or I can pick it up and take it with me and have it sitting with me if I'm sitting like on the couch or in a chair to work on my project. I know all of my stuff is here and it's pretty. So that's what I do with this one. It's a little bit shallow. Um, so I might put um, like a smaller ball of something in here. I've also knit my hexapuffs out of here before because it's just a mini skein. So I when I wind it into a little um, center pull cake, or sometimes I even hand wind those into a ball if um, if it's just enough to do like one hexi puff, then I'll put that in here. And this is a great size for that kind of stuff. So that is my other yarn bowl. And I have one more yarn bowl, but I'll share that next time. Um, it's one from my mom that she got me for my birthday uh, last year, not this year and um, it's kind of pink and cream colored and it's really pretty. And the other thing that I had as far as um, Notion stuff, I'm gonna close this up because I actually have a tart on it that I don't wanna reveal the secret sauce on, <laughs> is my Knitter's Pride Chart Keeper. So Molly from Homespun House, who enables me on all kinds of stuff, um, suggested this to me and it's awesome. I love it. It actually like is fairly large. It can stand up on your desk. You just snap the strap on to the other side and it'll stand up. It comes with really strong magnets 
and it's got a pocket on this side and it also has a loop for a pen. I don't currently have the pen in here, but it came with a pen. Um, and I've actually used it for work stuff before too, because it looks really professional. It's like black, kind of a nice fabric cover. It's a jacquard print. Um, yeah, I really like it a lot and it's a very good quality item. And the first one I got, the strap was actually messed up and they replaced it like really quickly for me, no questions asked. So great customer service as well. Okay. So that's kind of it for my things to show. Um, and I did have one FO that I mentioned last time and I found it. It was hiding. My children's hid it. So it's a little, little Fair Isle mouse. He's kind of squidged because he's been being chewed on by the baby. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I used all yeah, hair. I used all mini skeins for this. Um, this main color is the Cookies Tweed Yarn. It was a um, limited edition one from No Makers. And she does it for Christmas. So I think I mentioned last time that I got a Milk and Cookies um, sampler with a little gnome cookie cutter. So that's what I used that for. Um, this mint green one is mint chocolate chip. It's also another tweed yarn and it's from No Makers as well. There's a purple color there. Yeah, that now you can see it a little bit better. There's a purple color. That one is um, Tosh Merino Light in purple basil. And the blue is actually a silk that my mom knit a shawl out of. She gave me her leftovers and I have no idea what it is, but I was using it up. And I think the cream color, it's actually an orange and white. So here's where the orange showed up on his belly. But that one is, I think, um, orange creamsicle. It was again from my summer treats bundle um, of no makers. So this is like 98% no makers. And then there was little tiny bits of something else. Um, <clears throat> So it didn't take very much yarn and um, the kids have been enjoying playing with it. This would also make a really great cat toy if um, you have a cat. So Molly, this would be good for Kila. You should make one. The pattern is free. The pattern is called Fair Isle Mice and it's by Janet McMahon. And like I said, it's a free Ravelry download and it's just got um, the chart and the directions and it's got instructions for um, how to pick your colors and that kind of thing if you want to have um, high contrast or not. Um, and it was a very well written pattern. It was super quick. I think I did it in maybe a couple hours. So I highly recommend it. It was fun. Um, and then I did buy a couple things this week that I wanted to share. So one is I got some um, Tufted Woolens soap this is actually her hand soap in black orchid and martha is so sweet she uh, sends samples with her stuff so i always use her sock soap now um, again molly from a homespun house enabled me but i found out that martha lives like really close to me <laughs> so martha we need to have coffee again sometime without my children um so here's her card and she wrote me a sweet little note. But she had included a sample of the black orchid in my last one, because um, I'm allergic to lavender, and so she, she is always really nice about only giving me samples that don't have lavender in them. Um, and this one just smells amazing. So um, Martha, thank you so much. It's, it's really great. We just wash our hands with this now. Um, and we were completely out, so I'm glad that it came now. And right now I'm keeping it, I have two bars, so I'm keeping one in my bag. This is a bag that I got with my um, prenatal kit. Like when I went um, for the first visit to the nurse, 
when I found out I was pregnant with Joshua, they give you like a bag of stuff. It's basically a lot of coupons, um, some information, and then uh, usually you'll get like either a backpack or um, some other thing that has like some formula in it. Now I breastfeed, so I didn't use the formula. I usually try to save it and donate it like um, to women's shelters um, and stuff like that, or food kitchens around here, because they do take those for donations, and uh, if, if they've already given it to me, I hate to see it go to waste, so at least someone would use it, but this came in the pack as well, and I was like, hey, I think it's supposed to be for you to take your stuff to the hospital, like a toiletries bag, but it's actually a really great knitting bag, um, and I use this one for my cross stitch, so inside of there, there's, there's cross stitch that's down in there, all of my once upon a time ones. And right now I just threw my zigzagular socks in there, but usually it's my cross stitch bag. So the other thing that I got this week, and it's still in the package because it came today, this afternoon, and it is from Kristen at Volen Vine Yarns. And she packaged it so sweetly. She's got a little button in there, some uh, suckers, and crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Here's her card, Fallen by Yarns. And there's her information. And I have been wanting, wanting, wanting Jilted Rose, which is this really pretty um, mauve color. Um, it's like very muted and understated, but I could not catch an update to save my life. I just haven't been able to get it. So she did have this one of a kind skein and it was calling my name and I kept going, no, no. I closed the cart, I'd stop. And then it was still there. It was still there after a couple days. So it had to be mine. It is like purple, like almost electric purple. It's so beautiful. And it's sparkly because I love sparkly yarn. Yeah. Um, so she called it Space Wizard and it's on her blitzed base, which is 75% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. And it's 438 yards and I think I'm gonna knit a curl with it um, so I got my mom for her birthday I got her the curls book by Hunter Hamerson and when you order it off of Hunter's website you get a electronic copy as well so I gave my mom the paper copy and I took the ebook um, so I think I'm gonna make a curl with it um, I don't know which one yet the one I was kind of thinking of uh, the picture said that the sample was knit with 475 yards and I have 438. Um, supposedly you could knit them to any size that you want, so I may just go for it. I don't know. Um, or I may look through the book and decide I want to use one that's closer to this amount, but that's what I think I'm going to do with it. Um, so it does have a purpose. I'm trying not to buy anything that doesn't have a purpose, but... I wanted to buy something because um, some good stuff happened to me. So I wanted to celebrate that um, in my show notes. So I think that's pretty much all I had as far as um, knitting stuff. Uh, I just finished watching the most recent episode of A Homespun House and I wanted to say uh, to Molly, she was talking about um, knitted washcloths and does she, she doesn't know anybody who would use them they would probably just keep them and make and set them around to look pretty and um, so she wasn't sure she should keep knitting washcloths and I just wanted to say Molly I use knitted washcloths all the time I don't even I don't use anything else except for knitted washcloths at this point um, they are so luxurious. I use them to wash my face. That's all I use them for. I um, actually have like a scrub brush with a little um, ceramic dish and like a spring um, that we hand wash our dishes with. 
uh, from Honest Company. So I don't use dishcloths at all, but I use them for washcloths and they are amazing. You definitely need to use knitted washcloths if you haven't. And for anybody else out there too, like it's kind of like when you wear commercial socks and then you knit your first pair of hand knit socks and you try them on and you're like, I've been wearing rubbish on my feet my whole life. I've been lied to. These are amazing. I'm never going to wear commercial socks again. That's kind of the epiphany that I had the first time that I knit some socks and um, put them on my feet. And ever since then, I have not worn commercial socks again. I always wear hand knit socks. So I think that knitted washcloths are the same way. So I encourage you, use a knitted washcloth. You won't be sorry. All right, so that's all I had for that. Um, I should share what I'm wearing because it's kind of the elephant in the room, right? Um, so this my mom made for me for Christmas. It is an Age of Brass and Steam, and it's in a fiber optics paint box gradient. And these colors are totally me, 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 me. They're autumnal, so it um, goes from kind of a mustardy yellow orange all the way down to a deep forest green. And, um, it's super warm and it's beautiful and I love it. Um, and I actually want to next year at a wool gathering, um, I want to get two of these to knit the sugar maple um, sweater. It's kind of a, it's knit with a gradient. Um, you can look at it on Ravelry. I'll, knit to, I'll link to it in the show notes. But um, it has an asymmetrical hem that's a triangle and it's just beautiful and it's short sleeved um, and I think it would be so pretty with these colors or um, something similar. So I love it, mom. I wear it a lot, um, especially right now when I'm up in the nook where it's cold. And the other thing that I have on, let's see if I can do this with the dog on my lap. No, I totally can't. You can't see him very well. These are my French Quarter socks. Um, I think that pattern is by Ann Hansen. Um, I knit them with Crafts Meow yarn. Um, my friend Gwen is the dyer behind that business. And these are a mixture of merino and silk. And they're just awesome. They're very soft and um, they're in kind of a um, Merlot color. I think it's called Cherry Burgundy is the colorway. Um, but I've had them for years and they're still holding up really well. So, um, that was a fun pattern in it. I don't really knit cabled socks anymore. I've kind of strayed away from the more intricate sock patterns for a while there. I was really into those. And I think now I've kind of more gone towards, um, shawls and sweaters and, um, not so much into like knitting really intricate socks. I do still love socks, uh, but I'm more in knitting simple patterns and going for um, more interesting sock yarns and letting the yarn kind of make the sock be more interesting rather than kind of picking a very plain yarn and um, knitting a very intricate pattern, which is the way that I used to do them more. Okay, so. My news. Um, I actually got a new job at work. Um, still same boss, and um, it's more responsibility. I think it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be great. I'm very excited about it. I was kind of ready for a change. I mean, I love my team, and there was nothing wrong with them necessarily or with my job that I'm um, currently in, but. I was ready for more challenge and I think this is a really good move for me um, obviously good for my family because uh, it's not as much uh, responsibilities at kind of the beginning of the month and I think I'll have a little bit more flexibility time wise because um, I've been working quite a lot of hours um, so I'd like to have a little bit more time to spend with the kids and be able to go camping and, um, 
just enjoy when they're little and not in school and we don't have to kind of flex around a school schedule. So I'm pretty excited about that. And the other news is that we bought a car. Um, we just finished buying it today. So we spent basically all morning doing um, car stuff and we weren't expecting to bring it home today. And then they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna detail it out so that you can pick it up. And we were like, what? Uh, we didn't think we were taking it home today. We thought we had to go and sign all the papers and everything with um, our bank. But yeah, so we drove it home today. <laughs> um, we were replacing, my husband drove a 99 Honda Civic, so it's time. Um, that car will go on to my stepdad and um, its name is Bob. It's very reliable. We drove it across the country when we moved here from California. And um, my husband and I actually used to carpool all the time and that was the only car that we had. So um, now we have a Prius B, which is a station wagon, the Prius station wagon. And um, my husband is super excited because it's gonna be his car. Um, and if I haven't mentioned before, my husband stays home um, with the kids uh, so often he'll do errands during the week so that I don't have to do those on the weekend and we can just focus on uh, the family just spending time together and I get some time to relax and knit. Um, so he was kind of running into an issue where he didn't have a lot of space. Like if he put the, um, the stroller in the trunk, the two kids car seats are fairly large. So they pretty much take up the whole back seat and um, then trying to put groceries in there. It was just difficult. Um, so yeah, that's exciting and we're really happy. Um, just a second, sweetie, I'm almost done. So yeah, I think that's kind of all the news that I have. Um, again, if you wanna check out uh, my group on Ravelry, you can look up this old knit and it's uh, only got a couple of threads right now, but please feel free to start a topic if there's something that you want to talk about. I have a what would you like to hear about thread. So if you can think of anything that you want me to talk about or anything you'd like to know about me, um, please feel free to post it in the thread. I'm also going to try to post um, links to everything on my blog. I haven't got to that yet. I've been putting links to everything that I talk about in each episode in the thread in Ravelry for that um, week's episode. But I'm also gonna start doing that on my blog as well, just in case if there's people who don't regularly check Ravelry. I know that um, probably some of my in-laws would, um, I don't know if they'd wanna see the whole podcast, but um, they use the blog to keep up with the kids and keep up with what's going on with us. So um, I don't know, they might watch, but, um, yeah, I have a few friends that are knitting friends from pre-Ravelry, and I don't even know if they have Ravelry accounts, or if they do, they don't check them very often. I know, like, my sister doesn't log into her Ravelry very often, but um, she does look at the blog. So uh, my blog is thisoldknit.blogspot.com, and um, again, I am Ine on Ravelry, so feel free to send me a PM if you want to chat, um, post on the forums. And until next time, have a great week, guys. Bye-bye.